this is going to be you by the end of this video because these scrunchies are so easy to make, so quick to make. And the best part is if you've never crocheted before, you will be able to do this so easily, I promise. This is kind of ridiculous, so I'm gonna take these off. Ooh. Hello, welcome, if you're new here. May says hello. On this channel, you will find some more crochet content, such as tutorials, vlogs, I have a vintage crochet pattern haul, and you will also find things like subscription boxes, clothing things, thrift hauls, things like that. So if you're into that, subscribe, stick around. But this video is all about scrunchies. This tutorial is so easy and honestly is almost too easy, which is why I'm making this an absolute beginner tutorial. If you have never crocheted before, you can make these, I promise, and I'm gonna walk you through it, okay? If you are a very seasoned crocheter, I will just tell you what to do in the description, like in one line. So, so if you don't need the whole tutorial, you can just look at that, but I hope you'll stick with me and learn something new today. I'm so proud of you for showing up and learning something new today. So first I need to go over the supplies that you're gonna need. So obviously for any crochet project, you are going to need yarn and a hook, okay? This is not knitting, so you will only have one hook. They come in in many different sizes and materials. I have these metal ones that you can get at most, it's not really showing you, most craft stores. And the size that you want to get depends on the yarn that you want to get. So let's talk about yarn for a minute. The beauty of these scrunchies is that you can use any yarn, any yarn you can think of, you can use for these scrunchies, okay? Most of mine use this really fuzzy yarn. I think it's Lion Brand. I will try to link the different yarns that I used if I can find them. That's what all of these are. These are all just a very fuzzy yarn. I think it's Lion Brand Homespun or something. And this is another one I made with just this crazy kooky... <laughs> I don't even know what to call this. It's just a fun yarn. So if you have like a fun yarn laying around and you don't know what to make with it, make it a scrunchie. But, but, if you are an absolute beginner, I'm gonna contradict myself, do not use this yarn. <laughs> do not even use this yarn at first until you get a hang of how to crochet because all this added funkiness will throw you off and make you hate crocheting, okay? That's actually why I quit crocheting as a kid because I only wanted to use the funky yarn and I never learned with a basic yarn like this. So learn from my mistakes, do the first few scrunchies with a basic yarn like this that is just straight. If you can look at the ball like this and very clearly see the individual strands, then you're good to go. Another thing about yarn, yarn, what? Another thing about yarn that's important for any project is that yarns have different weights. My cat's going nuts in the background, so if you hear her, that's, that's what that is. Usually different projects, if you're following a pattern, will have you use a specific yarn weight, which is essentially how thick the strand is, a specific hook, things like that. But for this one, it doesn't matter, but I still want to teach you just so you know. So where you can find this weight when you go to the store is always on the label. So it will look something like this right here. So this is a medium weight yarn number four. They have different names, but this is number four is kind of like the standard yarn, at least in my opinion. And then also on the label, it will tell you what size hook to use with this yarn. So when in doubt, if you are starting a project, Unless the pattern says otherwise, just use the size hook that is on here. So the hooks are also called different things depending on where you are. It will usually have more than one way of naming it. So this is a 5.5 millimeter hook. It's also called a USI or nine. I use the millimeters, so I don't really know. So the, the yarn that I'm using right now is a four. I can't find my five and a half millimeter. So I am just using a six millimeter hook and you can see it also says j slash 10 on it so it's kind of easy to get confused but the millimeter will always have millimeter after it and then the other number is usually associated with a letter you can also go up or down half a millimeter size depending on what your project is these scrunchies are super flexible so you can pretty much use anything 
you will find that working with heavier weight yarns or bigger yarns will complete your projects faster. So if I were making these just on my own, I would probably use something like this six or super bulky yarn because it just goes a lot faster because the yarn is thicker. However, all of the thicker ones that I have are kind of harder to show you in a tutorial. You can see it's a little harder to find the strands. So I just wanted to use a yarn that would teach you the best. So I know that was a lot. I hope it made sense. But yes, to summarize it, you need a yarn that is easy to see, easy to work with. You need a hook that goes with that yarn. You need a pair of scissors. This part is optional, but you might also have one of these laying around. This is a tapestry needle. So this is used to weave in the ends of your scrunchie after you cut them off, but you can just use a crochet hook or your fingers for that. Last but certainly not least, you need a hair tie, a hair elastic, whatever you want to call them, to work this onto. So we will not be cutting any elastic. If you have like sewing elastic around, you could also use that, but this is just the easiest way to make them the right size. This specific kind is the best that I've found. So I don't know how to pronounce this brand. You want the ones for thick hair because let me show you, this is my last one. <laughs> These are a little larger than your average hair tie. I don't know if you can see that very well, which is perfect because not everyone wears scrunchies in their hair. Okay. This, the size of this is so much better for your wrist than like a tight regular hair tie. So that is the kind that I recommend. That way you can do like a little accessory moment and it's comfortable, okay? So now that we have our supplies, let's, uh, let's make a scrunchie. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get the yarn onto the hook somehow. Just ignore my nails, okay? I have never in my life had perfect nails and I'm not about to start now. So anyway, what you want to do is make a tail that's at least a few inches long, this short side over to here, okay? So you just wanna grab that part and hold it tight and then sticking out your pointer finger, wrap the yarn once around and then you're gonna make another loop that goes behind it so that it kind of makes this X. And then I'm just holding that shorter side over there so that it stays in a tight X. You want to insert the hook under the first loop, grab the second loop, and pull that second loop under. And then all you have to do is carefully take the loop off your finger pull both of the strings and then pull the short side so that that loop closes up around the hook. And now you have a slip knot and your yarn is on there. So let's do that again so you can um, practice a few times. Like I said, there are many different ways to do this. If you know a better way, go ahead and do it that way. It, it really just doesn't matter. This is just the way that I learned. So. Secure the yarn once around and then make the X and secure it back here. Under the first loop, grab the second loop and twist the hook back around. And then just carefully remove your finger Pull both loops or both strings and then pull the shorter string and there you go so feel free to practice that a few times or learn a different way if you need to and you want to make sure you want to kind of pull both loops and make sure that the knot is pretty tight and right snug up against the hook but not so snug that you can't move it very easily because you want to be able to move it easily but not so loose that you lose it. Now, usually a crochet project will start with chains across. So a chain, you don't have to learn this. This is not important to this, but a chain will usually look like this. 
and then you use that as a foundation row to build your stitches onto but we are not doing that so forget that don't even look at that erase that from your brain we are going to use the hair tie as the chain so we are just going to go straight on crocheting all the way around this as our foundation just like we had to put the yarn on the hook we got to put the yarn onto this thing. But I guess first before that, we gotta learn how to hold the hook, okay? There are also many different ways to hold the hook. I do it like this. I think it's called the knife hold. So I hold it pretty much like a knife. So what happens is, I know the close up is a little hard to see, but with my thumb and my middle finger, I hold this little thumb area here. I keep it secure with my last two fingers. And then with this finger, I use to help me guide the yarn. Yeah, so this is how I hold it. Some people hold it like this, I think. I don't know, I'm not even gonna teach you that or even try to because I don't know how they hold it. So anyway, <laughs> to put the yarn onto the hair tie. Also forgot to mention that. You are going to be always holding the yarn from the skein in this hand. And that's important because if you're pulling it right from the ball, like without any support from your hand, it's just going to be very hard to control. I guess what I do is I put my last two fingers down over the yarn and then over top of my pointer finger. So if I'm working, I can easily move the yarn where it needs to go. I hope that makes sense. I completely forgot that I would have to teach you how to hold the yarn and the hook. Basically, you will find a way that's comfortable for you. But anyway, <laughs> for what, a third time now? Let's get this yarn on the hair tie. You want your yarn going back behind and your hook in front so that it can kind of cross over like this. So the first step is to bring the hook underneath the hair tie. Sorry, I'm trying to get it to focus. So the hook goes underneath the hair tie and you want to grab the yarn from the skein and pull it up. And so now you have two loops on your yarn. And now we are going to continue to pull this loop through the loop that you attach the yarn to your hook with. And now our yarn is attached. And that is called a slip stitch. So I'm going to show you one more time. Under the hair tie, grab the yarn and pull it straight up. So now you have two loops. And then just pull the new loop through the old loop. And you can tighten the tail if you want. But there is your slip stitch and now it is attached to the hair tie and then we can start working all around it. So this scrunchy design uses something called a double crochet. So essentially what a, a double crochet is twice as tall as a single crochet. If we do a double crochet from where we are now, it will look kind of weird because it will go from being short from be to being tall. So what we're going to do is those chains that I mentioned in the beginning, we are going to do two of those so that our work is tall enough that when we do double crochets all around, it won't look weird. So from now on, I'm going to refer the small loose end of the yarn as the tail. We will not be using that anymore. And I'm going to be referring to the yarn from the skein as the working yarn because it's the yarn that we are working from. To, anyway, to make a chain, um, you don't have to go under anything. You just grab the working yarn with your hook and pull it through the loop. So that is one chain. And then we're gonna do that again. So you just grab the working yarn and bring it through that loop. So now we have a tall starting point so that when we do our double crochets all around, 
it will all be even and this part won't be slanted in any way. So congratulations, you have done a slip stitch and two chains. And we are, believe it or not, halfway through this scrunchie. <laughs> I promise you, it'll get a lot easier. Okay, so now literally all we have to do for the rest of this scrunchie is double crochets. So to do a double crochet, before you go under the hair tie, you want to wrap the working yarn from back to front like this so that we start with two loops on top. And from there, you wanna go straight down under the hair tie. And then just like before, we're going to grab the working yarn and bring it back up. And so now we have one, two, three loops on the hook. And instead of pulling them straight through like we did with the slip stitch, you're going to move them down a little bit and you're going to bring the yarn from back to front again. So now we have four loops and then pay attention here because you're going to bring this fourth loop through two of them and then back up and now we have two loops left. And then you're going to bring the yarn from back to front again and go through the last two. And then you have a double crochet. And you know you're done when you only have one loop left. So you have done a double crochet, either that or you have just gotten very confused. <laughs> and I understand. So we're just gonna do this a whole, um, together a few more times. I'm literally, I'm going to finish this scrunchie with you on camera, so don't worry. So we have done one double crochet. So remember, the first step is to bring the yarn around, and then we go under and pull through, and then we do the first round of two stitches off and then we do the second round of two stitches off and you can see the cat hair that I <laughs> sucked into my project there so we'll just keep doing that over and over again so yarn over go through pull up a loop yarn over go through two, yarn over, go through two. And it really helps when you're working with projects if you can turn the hook like this instead of trying to move your wrist all over the place because one, you're gonna get confused and two, that's gonna hurt your wrist after a while. So get used to just twisting the hook like this. So we're gonna do that again, yarn over, through the hair tie, pull up that third loop, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. And you can see we're already working on like a nice little rectangle. And so what we're going to do for the rest of this is really truly just double crochets all the way around. So I'm gonna pick up speed a little bit. You can always watch this again. Watch parts of this video however many times you need to. You can even on YouTube turn the speed of the video down. So if that first time that I showed you was still too fast, you can turn the video to half speed if you need to. Yeah, once you get the hang of this, you will just do this all the way around. And as you're working, pay attention to how loose or tight your yarn is. This is very important for any project. If you notice that it's very hard to move your hook if it's making this noise, I don't know if the microphone picked that up, but if you're like really struggling to pull your hook through there, and it's just really hard. That means, first of all, calm down, take a deep breath, you're fine. <laughs> you are stressed out. 
you are just pulling too hard, okay? Step one, what you need to do is just loosen this first knot up a little bit. You can pull this the whole time. It's kind of fun. Just loosen it up just a little bit and just be a little more loose. Make sure you're pulling loops when you pull them up. Don't stick so tight, all right? Pull it up just a little bit, you know? Everything will be fine. Pull it up so give yourself enough room to actually work into that stitch. Similarly, if your stitches are just so loose and crazy that you just don't know what's going on, all right, if you're like looking like this, then just dial it back a little bit. You want your stitches to be a little bit loose, but not so loose that you find your hook just like slipping out of them. You don't want your stitches just to be scooting off of there. So work on finding a happy medium. Holding the yarn in your non-dominant hand and just knowing when to hold it tighter or let it go looser, that will just really help you. So anyway, pro tip right there. Yeah, just keep on working. My camera's actually about to die, so I will meet you back here <laughs> when we are almost done going all the way around. All right, so once you get to the end, or what you think is the end, in order to get this ruffly texture that most scrunchies have, what you wanna do when you run out of space is just pull your work back until you have some more scrunchie to work with and just keep it going. So keep working and keep pulling the scrunchie back until you absolutely cannot pull it anymore. And that will give it this fun, ruffly texture. And it will make it so that when you stretch it out, you won't see as much of the hair tie. So get it all like nicely packed in there. Once you have crocheted enough that you are just done, you are at the end, <laughs> you are happy with the amount of scrunchage going on here, we need to complete the circle. I'm just gonna stretch this apart so you can see it a little easier. So this is the side we're working on, and then this is that those chains that we made at the beginning. So we need to join these together somehow, and we're gonna do it the same way that we put the yarn on the hair tie in the first place. So you will see these little Vs up top here. That is what you would work in if you are continuing on to a second row, that is how crochet works usually. So you work into these and you keep building up, but we're just going to close this off since we're only just doing this one row. In theory, if you want a huge scrunchie, you could do what we did at the beginning where you can make two more chains, you know? You could start, you could insert the hook here and make two more chains up and then keep doing double crochets around for a second row if you really want to. But I actually haven't tried that. So if you try that, uh, show me on Instagram, um, show me how it turns out. But we're just gonna finish this one off. So what we're going to do is in this first V here, you're going to put your hook through that V like that, grab the working yarn and pull it through. And then just like that first slip stitch, we're just gonna go right ahead and pull that new yarn through the old yarn. And now we just have one loop on the hook again and you can see that it's pretty seamlessly attached. Now this part is important because if you don't do it right, everything will unravel. So we are going to cut the yarn off. You want to leave I don't know, maybe like six inches at first. I'm just going to cut the yarn. And then like I said, if you stop it here, your project will unravel. So what we're going to do after we cut it is just do one more loop through. So we're just going to yarn over and pull it through the loop and then just keep pulling it until that yarn runs out. So your hook is free and you have 
this thing going on. Just pull this, pull it down, and your work is safe and secure and it's not going anywhere if I pull it. So now you have your scrunchie and you just have these little ends. What you can do with these is you can weave them with a hook if you want. You can just put your hook through and just kind of sew it in back and forth so that the strings don't go anywhere. They're not just hanging out. Or you can use something like a needle and that will just be an easier way. Sorry that the needle is the same color as the yarn. That will just be an easier way to go back and forth through the yarn just to secure those ends. And you don't have to weave them all the way through. You can just cut them off once you feel like they are secure enough. And the same goes for that tail that we left at the beginning. It really doesn't matter how you do this. Just kind of weave it in wherever. It helps if you go back and forth. Just weave it in good enough so that if you stretch it out a lot, the whole ends are not coming out anywhere. And then you will have a finished scrunchie. And you will be so proud of yourself and I will be so proud of you. All right, we are back on my face. Hi, hello. You, my friend, have just made a scrunchie, okay? Look how fun that was. Look how easy it was. There we go. And the best thing about this one, you can wear it all the time. And so if someone asks, you can be like, oh, this? Yeah, I made this. These, once you get the hang of it, I can make one of these in about three minutes. This is just the perfect project. If you have yarn left over or whatever, just pop the supplies in your bag. Do it during lunch at school. Do it on the bus. Do it in the waiting room at the doctor's office or something. These are the perfect gifts for people as well. Just all around a great project to know how to do. And look at you. If you didn't know how to crochet before this video, you know how to crochet, okay? This definitely counts. So I am proud of you for learning how to crochet. I really hope you enjoy this new skill. I hope you're making just hundreds and hundreds of scrunchies after this. Like I said, once you get the hang of it with this easy yarn, try something funky. If you liked this tutorial, if you made a scrunchie, leave this video a like. Comment if you have any questions, if there was anything about this video that was confusing or anything. If you have any questions about crochet, please ask me because this is literally the first tutorial I've ever done. So, feedback is appreciated. Tell me if you did it. My Instagram is in the description. If you want to like send me a picture of your scrunchie or if you want to like post it and tag me, that'd be super cool. I would love to see what you make. And if you want to see more beginner tutorials like this, like absolute beginner tutorials, leave me some ideas in the comments. If there's something that you really want to make, but all of the tutorials are too hard, tell me and I will do my best to make a tutorial that you can follow because seriously, anyone can do anything if they have a good teacher and some patience. My camera died in the middle of the outro, which was pretty rude. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure what I was saying is you can do anything. I wanted to thank you for taking the time to learn today and spending a little bit of your time with me. And I hope to see you in a future video. Take care.